Hello everyone and welcome to a new Sega Mega Drive Genesis game dev tutorial. I've already covered how to use a sprite to create Mega Drive backgrounds in a previous lesson. However, as good as a sprite is, it does have some limitations when it comes to creating background graphics for the Mega Drive. So in this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to use a tool called 16 Tile. The creator of this tool is a gentleman by the name of Yuri Neri, and you may know him as one of the programmers on games such as Blazing Chrome and also Fendral Guardian Moonrider, which you're seeing on the screen right now. He's also spent quite a bit of time dabbling in Mega Drive SGDK development. He's already produced some very impressive demos here with the smooth scrolling, so hopefully we'll see something from him in the future in terms of a full game maybe. 16 Tile differs quite a bit from A Sprite in terms of how it works, and this applies to both to how you create the backgrounds as well as how you actually take those backgrounds and input them into SGDK. The first thing we're going to look at is how 16 Tile handles the palette. The Mega Drive palette is 9-bit RGB, and of course in RGB, the R stands for red, the G for green, and the B for blue. 9-bit RBG just means that three bits are assigned to each of these colors. If you take each of those three bits and try and make as many combinations of zeros and ones as you can, the result is eight different variations. And of course you can combine each of those red, greens, and blues with each other to create unique colors. And if you then do eight times eight times eight, you get 512, which is of course the number of colors in the Mega Drive palette. Other machines of the era, for example the 32X and the Super Nintendo, have a 15-bit RGB palette. 15 bits divided by 3 allocated to each of the colours gives 5 bits per colour, and the combination of different 1s and zeros in 5 bits is 32. And then if you get 32 times by 32 times by 32, you then get 32,768, which is of course the 32X and Super Nintendo palette. To see how this works in practice, and especially how it works with 16 tile, let's go to a sprite and have a look at the palette there. Here you can see that the colours are divided into red, green and blue, and each of these colours have 256 different possible shades of each colour. So from 0 to 255, so if I go through each of the red and the, the green and the blue here, you'll see that as we go from 0 to 255, it goes from very darker colours all the way up to much brighter colours. And of course we can also use a combination of these to create all different colours in between, not just red, green and blue. We've already established that the Mega Drive can have eight different shades of red, green and blue, but the question is which values of red, green and blue between 0 and 255 can the Mega Drive have that accurately reflects the actual colour palette of the console? When I first started developing for the Mega Drive, I found this palette online and it goes up in steps of 36. So 0 to 36 to 72 to 108, 144, 180, 216 and finally 255. Now, of course, it's not exactly steps of 36, but it roughly is. And uh, so that was our, what I was using for the first few months. However, shortly after I uploaded one of my tutorials on how to create graphics for the Mega Drive, someone emailed me and said that the output of the Mega Drive, the VDP, had been measured and actually it goes up in these irregular values, so not in steps of 36, but instead it goes from 0 to 52, 287, to 116, 144, 172, 206 and finally 255. This is the palette that I provided the upload link to, so this is one you've been using if you download that one. And it's also the one that I've been using ever since. It was only when I started using 16 tile with my own graphics I created myself that a few problems came up where the colours when they transported from Ace Brat to 16 tile, they changed, the colour changed and after speaking to Pyron and Yuri it's when I found out that they use a different palette. After Yuri and Pyron discussed it between themselves they decided that uh, actually Steps of 32 is the one that most works best with SGDK and that when outputted to the Mega Drive potentially produce the most consistent result. So when using 16 tile you have to use the uh, palette that goes up in steps of 32. I will provide a link to both of these palettes down below so you can choose which one you want. The one that someone gave me before seems to work fine if you just use it in a sprite and then import it directly into SGDK. It seems to be okay but for consistency's sake and for because it works with 16 tile and it seems to produce a, a good result too, I'm going to be using the 32 step palette from now on. Before you use 16 tile, you're of course going to have to download it first, so I'm going to provide the link to Yuri's website below. As you can see here, there's no need to install it, it's a very small file, just 2 megabytes. Just uh, download it, then unzip it, and then you can simply start using the program. Make sure you use the latest version, which is at the time of uh, recording this video, is version 101. 
We're going to need a tile set which to import into 16 tile and then create a background with. So I do that using a sprite. For this example, I've simply ripped some assets from another Mega Drive game. I'm sure many of you can recognize which one it is. However, since I ripped it from the Gens emulator, the, the way the Gens emulator outputs the colors, the RGB values are going to be different. They're not going to be steps of 32. And this is going to cause some problems, which I'll highlight in a minute. Remember that for any Mega Drive graphic, we want to make sure that the height and width is a multiple of eight. Leave the first 16 by 16 tile, make sure it's blank. And make sure it's just uh, whichever the first color in the palette is, make sure that's the background color and in the second 16 by 16 tile we're simply going to draw the palette in order one pixel at a time this is just to make sure that when we import it into 16 tile the order of the palette the index won't get mixed up next just navigate to wherever you stored the 16 tile folder and double click on the exe file and this here is what 16 tile looks like you can use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out and if you put the cursor to the edges of the of the map here you can actually change the size of the background we're going to create before we really start putting the background together however we're first going to save our project so go to save at the top and save and simply give it whichever name you want and then click save next up if you navigate to the right hand side of the screen where it says layer and simply give the background a name so i'm going to be very unoriginal and simply call it background Next up, we're going to have to tell 16 tile which tile set we're going to use because at the moment there's no tile set assigned to this background. So if you go to the top again on the five is right, go to tile set and click plus and we can create a tile set. And if you then if we zoom in a bit here and then we click this arrow sign, we can download a tile set. Now, obviously, we're going to choose the one we just created. However, when I input the tile set, you can see that the colors are a bit off. I mentioned before how I ripped the assets for this tile set using the Gens emulator and as I said the RGB, RGB values are different so if we want it to display correctly I'm going to have to take the RGB values and alter them to change them so they're in steps of 32 so that they're actually replicated in, in 16 tile. After saving now and I have to go back to 16 tile we can delete the, the tile set we had before and again click plus. Then we're going to have to click on the arrow sign and then we're going to load our new one and as you can see the colors are a lot more accurate now if we move the cursor to the left a bit we can see this um, 8 by 8 or 16 by 16 or we can change it to 32 by 32 this is just the size of the tiles you're going to uh, paste into our main background so i'm choosing uh, 16 by 16 here but you can also do 8 by 8 or 32 by 32. if we go back to our background map you can see on the right hand side we have our tile set now you can simply uh, left click there and then left click to paste those uh, tiles into our main background i shall warn you in advance it's not going to be the prettiest map and <laughs> i'm just going to uh to change the size to make it a bit the map a bit smaller so you don't have so much to to paste have don't have so many tiles to draw but as you can see it's quite you can do it quite quickly you can quickly um, paste whichever tiles you want you select whichever tiles you want from the tile set on the right hand side and you can even select a bunch at the same time if that's easier for you or you can select them one at a time so i'm selecting the flowers here you can see me hold the left mouse, bu mouse button and then scroll along just to paste them wherever you want that's all pretty straightforward but let's go through a few shortcuts that we can use so if i just zoom in here and then if i press the x button the tiles are going to flip horizontally and you can see on the right hand side here it tells you when a tile is flipped horizontally or not and the same with the flipping vertically if you press z it will flip vertically and you got a little um on the right hand side you got that little button that shows you whether it's flipped or not one shortcut 16 tile does not have is an undo shortcut so normally you make a mistake and you can control z and it will undo what you just did if you make a mistake but um, 16 tile doesn't have any kind of undo button so make sure you be careful what you're drawing and make sure you save regularly as well because if you make a mistake then there's no way to just undo it you're gonna have to try and clean up the mess yourself once you finish your map you should save and then click on export at the very top here and now what that's going to do is going to export the for example the palette the tile set and the tile map now let's take a look at how we import these into sgdk if you double click into tile sets eventually you'll, you'll have the tile set here simply drag it and pull it into our res folder and then do the same now we have the palette here but we're not going to use these right now next we're going to do the same for the tile map so 
find the tile map, click inside the folders, eventually we find it here, simply drag that and drop it into the res folder. And there we have both of these, the tile set and also the tile map in our res folder. So of course next we're going to have to update our resources.res file to make sure that those resources are loaded. So for tile set, we're going to use the tile set underscore one dot png and then for the village map, we're going to use the background PNG that we just created in 16 tile. And of course we can also extract the palette from that background map. So make sure you change the, the palette, the village.pal to be background.png as well. Let's just leave the sprite as it is. We leave the link sprite in there. And just so you know, the file, the SEDK file we're using here is just the one we use to do the camera for the, the camera lesson we did a couple of weeks back. In main.c we're going to have to change the map width and map height variables just to the uh, width and height of our new map that we created in 16 tar. And I'm also going to change the resolution because at the moment I've got it as 256. Let's just delete that and so it re reverts to the regular re horizontal resolution of 320. And of course we've got a variable we need to change up here too. We need to change the horizontal resolution from 3256 to 320. The only other change we have to make to main.c is to our map underscore create function. So this is what we use to create the level map. And remember like previously for the last parameter, we had to do this tile at full, open the brackets and give SGDK lots of information about the map. For example, which palette it uses, whether the map should be high or low priority and whether the tiles are flipped horizontally or vertically. The main advantage of using 16 tile to create the map is it embeds all that information on a tile by tile basis within the actual map itself, within the PNG file. So we can simply delete tile at full and replace it with in. If we now save and compile and load up the ROM in an emulator, we should see that the map we created in 16 tile is now on the screen. And there we have it, our Zelda spin-off game for the Mega Drive Crusader of Hyrule. What we've done today in this lesson on 16 tile, i.e. create a background image, is something that we probably could have created even quicker just using a sprite. The reason for using 16 tile instead is it offers some advantages which are hard to achieve just using a sprite or any other software. First of all, 16 tile allows us to assign the palette on a tile by tile basis rather than having to assign one single palette to the entire background. That means we can use more than one palette within a single background. Since the Mega Drive can display four palettes at the same time, giving a total of 61 colors, this gives us a big advantage and is a very useful tool to have. And this is what we will be covering in the next lesson. 16 tile also allows us to assign priority on the tile by tile basis as well. And this can be very important to giving the foreground a 3D effect so that the player, for some parts of the level, you can move in front of the foreground and in some parts of the level of the map to move behind the foreground. And this will give a nice 3D effect alongside palette score and other techniques. And this is what we'll be covering after we do the multiple palettes lesson. Last but not least, 16 tile allows us to create a level collision array very quickly. So this is what we're covering three weeks from now. And that's when we we'll really be getting into the level collision business. Okay, so I think that just about wraps things up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content, then please subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. And if you want to support the channel further, I have a Patreon account. You won't go unrewarded. And until next time. Farewell.